Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI Inc. Insights podcast episode, I explore Jessica Ickelsoy's recent Inc. video, Work-Life Balance is Impossible. Aim for this instead. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be with you again today as I explore the recent Inc. video, Work-Life Balance is Impossible. Aim for this instead. In the early days of California Baby, Jessica had two toddlers and a company to run, so they hit the road. In this brief video, hear her recount what that was like in the early days and what that means for the idea of work-life balance and what we do as we try to connect to the elements of our personal life and our work life. I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. So in the early days of California Baby, it was really important to me to have my kids with me because I didn't want to have a life at home and a life on the road because I was traveling so much. Here she is, an entrepreneur, a young mother, she has her children with her, and she's trying to figure out how to get her business running and how to fulfill the other aspects of her life, the other roles that she has. And of course, what's so important within that is the role of mother. And she has these children that she wants to care for. She loves them, she wants to care for them, but she also has this business that she's trying to get going and off the ground, and it requires a lot of time and work. And she's stuck hearing about this this notion of work-life balance and trying to figure out, well, what do I do? Uh, I don't have anyone to, t- to watch the kids, so I guess I just take them with me. And so as she briefly recounts the story in this in this brief video, you'll hear a little bit more about that. I was going to to pitch my products to a major retailer, and I took my kids with me, and we went to a bookstore, and I said, oh, you can have any thing you want in here (laughs) and so I bought a pile of books and I showed up to the meeting with my kids and I sat them at the end of the conference table with a pile of books and I said you know mommy's gonna be over here talking to him you know and um, they were a little surprised and I just pretended like this is normal (laughs) and uh, and it did become normal That was just my mode of operation. You know, that account was just one stop of many. I probably hit 10 Whole Foods stores, five, you know, gift stores or beauty supplies. It was just another day in the office, actually. I love this story. Uh, It's so classic. And perhaps as a father of six children, one who uh, contributes a great deal to the child care and the, the tasks around the house, uh, my wife and I uh, share share those roles um, quite equally. And so we both juggle a lot with our work and with our kids. And so at least in a little, in a small way, I can relate to what she's saying, that you're trying to juggle these tasks. You're trying to juggle two different things that require your attention. And I love how she made a game out of it. Like, let's go to the bookstore. Let's Let's find some books. Uh, that you love. And now I'm going to take you to this really important meeting. You stay over here, you read your books, mommy will be over here. I think that's great. And frankly, I've done similar things as I've uh, been involved in important meetings, um, you know, in one part of the kitchen table while my kids are doing school, um, like two feet away from me, right down the kitchen table. And uh, probably many of you listening can relate to that. And I think, you know, pre-COVID, 
uh, that was not as normal. Nowadays, kind of everyone almost expects it. But back in the day, she was a trailblazer. Uh, she was willing, uh, and I'm and I'm really impressed by her her uh, her courage to just go out and do it. But she was willing to just show up and act like this is completely acceptable. This is completely normal. And in fact, it is acceptable. It is normal. They just didn't realize it at the time. So when other people were looking at her thinking, what are you doing bringing your kids to a pitch meeting uh, or a sales meeting or whatever? Um, you know, she just shrugs it off and says, hey, I, you know, I'm here. I have a product. I have something important and valuable for you. It doesn't really matter that my kids are sitting on the other end of the table reading their books. Uh, I love that she had the courage to do that, and it just became normal. It came, became part of the routine. Her kids grew into that kind of a, a routine, and ultimately her clients just learned to accept it, and, and they realized it wasn't a big deal. How often do we see that in our workplace? We have all these rules, we have all these norms and expectations about what is and is not acceptable, what is professional, what is not professional, what is distraction versus not. Uh, and most of it is, is re really nonsense. Uh, most of those types of norms are, are there uh, out of tradition, but they don't necessarily translate into what actually leads to better performance, or better outcomes for the organization. And it's amazing when you can simply allow your people the autonomy to do what makes sense for them. Uh, flexibility in their schedule, flexibility in how they get their work done. Uh, when you allow them that autonomy, uh, th then they can thrive and, and do some really cool things and they can make things work. Uh, they, can, they can get it to fit in a way that doesn't sacrifice either. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. That's the benefit of being an entrepreneur. Right? Well, that's the benefit of starting your own business, and that's in large part why I did it. Because you can set your own hours, you can set, you know, your workplace. You know, you can say, "Hey, everybody can bring your kids, you can bring your dogs to work." You, can, you get to make those rules. That really is a nice benefit of being an entrepreneur, being your own boss, uh, being your own CEO, starting your business, creating the culture that you want, the systems, the structures, the policies, the practices, the norms that, uh, that are more healthy. Uh, that's, that's a really great um, opportunity you know, as an entrepreneur. But let's also not forget that each and every one of us who are leaders, we have the ability to provide a lot of that kind of autonomy to our people. Now, sometimes there will be corporate policies that we as middle management might have to adhere to, um, and we have to find a way to balance uh, between what uh, we allow our people to do in terms of flexibility and autonomy versus you know, following those rules. But in my experience, most of the time, leaders uh, at various levels have quite a bit of flexibility in allowing and set, kind of setting this, the tone and the standard for what their people do within their teams. Uh, and so just think about your people. Think about what they need. Think about what would be helpful to them. 
And if it would be helpful to them to allow for a flexible work schedule, then geez, you know, what, what's the harm in providing that? They'll be loyal to you and grateful to you for providing that benefit. Uh, and it's a, and it's a, it can be a huge um, benefit, uh, not just in terms of morale, but you think of things like childcare and the expense. And if you can just allow someone a little bit of flexibility so that they you know, can come in a little bit later so they can drop their kid off at school or leave a little bit early so that they can pick up their kid from school or work from home on, on certain days because their kids are on preschool the other days. Uh, and, and on the off days, they need to be able to watch their kids. I mean, there's just so many different types of arrangements that people find themselves in. Uh, in this example, of course, she's talking about her children and bringing children to work. Uh, but, you know, life happens and there's so many different ways that, uh, that employees appreciate the flexibility uh, to be able to handle what they need to do uh, at home and then and match it with what needs to be done in the workplace. And lots of studies have shown that when we can provide that autonomy and that flexibility through the authority we have in our leadership roles, whether we're CEO or on down the line all the way to a frontline supervisor, to the extent we have the ability, we should uh, give that autonomy and pass it on to our people. It's never going to be even. Uh, there's almost no such thing as work-life balance. Uh, there's work-life imbalance. You know, your life takes over a little bit and the work suffers and back and forth. I think it's, it's about just managing it. What do you think? Is there such a thing as work-life balance? Or do you just have to manage these conflicting priorities and the tension that exists between them? My personal feeling is that it's actually a little bit of both, that of course, we don't live in an ideal world where you can have a perfect balance between work and home life, uh, and that we also, um, we need to just be able to manage you know, that imbalance, we need to manage uh, the tension. But also, uh, I, I do think there is such a thing as uh, having personal boundaries and striking um, somewhat of a balance, recognizing that we can't keep that balance perfectly, that there are going to be times where work takes over, there are going to be times where family life tapes, takes over, and that's perfectly normal and healthy, uh, by the way. And so as organizations, you know, we can promote the idea of work-life balance, uh, which I think is a good thing as long as we back it up structurally, procedurally, uh, in policy how we deal with paid time off, um, encouraging our people to take that time off, allowing them flexibility to work from home, uh, to work uh, different hours, uh, et cetera. All of those things can contribute to how we manage that tension. So whether we call it work-life balance or just managing the different aspects of our lives and the different roles that we have, ultimately I'm not sure the terminology really matters that much. And I think we could certainly uh, have a healthy debate about what would be the most appropriate way to call that. But the bottom line is the literature exists, the academic literature, the research exists. I've done much of it myself. And it shows that there's tremendous benefits when employers can provide work-life balance provisions for their people. So as a boss, if I can look for ways to allow more flexibility, more autonomy, more opportunity for people to do what they need to do at home so it doesn't conflict with their work, so they can focus on their work when they're working, and you can maintain healthy personal boundaries, when that is in place, it enhances the individual's performance, it enhances the organization's performance, and it's a win-win all the way around. When employers, on the other hand, try to control everything. They try to control how people do their work in the workplace. They try to control uh, how uh, people do their work, when they do their work, uh, where they do their work. And then, and then people go home and they still feel like they have to answer their emails and be on top of everything. When there's that kind of a dynamic, it's a, it creates an unhealthy culture and ultimately people burn out and eventually they leave. Your best people will leave because they'll have other options. And when your best people choose to leave, then you're in trouble. Uh, that's a, an, an indictment, a scathing indictment of leadership. And you can do better. You, you can do better. And it's really not rocket science. As long as we can respect the dignity, um, you know, show dignity and respect towards our people and allow them some reasonable flexibility and autonomy, then people can manage that tension. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, 
I hope you stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.